evening, everybody. I'm Tom Vassell. Welcome back to the Dice Tower as we go through my favorite games from various publishers. Today, we're talking about Capstone Games. Now, a couple things before we jump into this. Um, Capstone Games, I like talking about them because they put proof to the falsehood that heavy Euro strategy games need to look boring because their production values are top tier. Their stuff looks stellar. A game that just missed my list, um, uh, it, the Coffee Traders, and is my number 11, is a fairly heavy Euro style game and it looks amazing. They've kind of taken the mantle from other companies like Real Grande and Mayfair in days past of bringing many games to America, to the English language. It's fantastic. And because of that, making this list, there are a few games I might have missed because they were published by another company and they just got the rights to pr reprint them. A good example, I think, would be Orleans, um, is I think being reprinted by Capstone, but I haven't yet seen a copy with that Capstone logo on the box, so I'm not including that in my list, but I would because it's a fantastic game. That being said, there are some great games we're about to talk about, and I'm sure you'll all be shocked at number one. All right, so here we go, my 10 favorite games from Capstone. Number 10, Savannah Park. Now, Savannah Park is what I call a bingo-esque game. I love these style of games where one person will draw a tile, in this case, these tiles are different animals, everyone takes that same tile and puts it on their board. And you're trying to make groups of the same kind of animals, but have them connected to watering holes. And the different tiles have different groups of animals, so how you put them on the board matters. Once you put something in, you can't, you know, you can never put it back, uh, replace it. It's a simple game. It's not tremendously thematic. Yes, there's animals in the game, but it's more about putting the right tiles in the right places. But like I said, this is a style that's near and dear to me. I find this to be a lot of fun. So my number 10, Savannah Park. Number nine is a two-player game that was based on a larger game called Pipeline, but is really nothing like Pipeline, and this is Curious Cargo. Now, I just mentioned Savannah Park, a great game for new people, a family game, a gateway game. Um, Curious Cargo is not that. Curious Cargo is a brain burner where you have a little factory and you're putting little tiles in it, connecting pipes, and then sending trucks that are going to be picking up stuff and dropping off stuff on your factory and to your opponent's factory. Um, and the amount of thought that goes into this as you sit there and go, oh, how do I put this pipe here? How do I put it there? I play with some people who are like, that is just too much for me. It is pretty heavy thinking, but it's very interesting and unique to me. I think there's a lot of fun aspects to this game. And there's even a hard version of with three colors. I'm like, nah, nah, fool. I'm happy with the, the two color, the two different pipes rather than three different colors. But it's still a neat concept, and I like it. Curious Cargo. Number eight is Cloud Age. Now, Alexander Pfister is known for his heavier games. Cloud Age, some people don't like it because they think it's too simple. But there's a few things I really enjoy about Cloud Age. One is I like the concept of the game. I like the idea of flying this blimp along, going to different cities. You Maybe you want to shoot farther to get the stuff that's more valuable or take your time and pick up more points as you go by. And there, there's an interesting card interplay. But the other thing I like is it has a unique mechanism where you can see part of a card through this cloud, you know, there's a clouds that get, you can see part of it and you're picking, you get a portion of that card, you get resources, but you can't see all of it. So it's just a unique idea that I find to be really fun. This is, uh, Alexander Pfister's games aren't usually tremendously thematic. I think this one's more thematic than most and I find it to be fun, Cloud Age. Number seven is Juicy Fruits. Mmm, it has nothing to do with gum. This is a slide puzzle style game where you're sliding tiles around in front of you and the farther you slide a tile, the more fruit you get from that particular tile. If I slide it two spaces, I get two fruit, three spaces, three fruit, but you're kind of constrained to this grid. But as you collect fruit, you can spend that fruit to remove tiles from your grid, which lets you slide these tiles even farther or buy more tiles to put on there to slide around or get ice cream, which is just straight victory points it's a pretty simple game, but offers some fun, interesting decisions in the big, fat, you know, wooden fruit pieces. Mmm, juicy fruits. Number six is uh, Uwe Rosenberg game, a polyomino style game called New York Zoo. Now, he's made a lot of polyomino games uh, with the Tetris style pieces. 
This is one of the nicest looking ones. It has a fun theme, the zoo, and I think that puts it over the top. It has a rondelle of sorts where you're moving around and collecting different pieces to put in your zoo, uh, adding animals to those pieces. Those animals give birth as this rondelle moves around. Once you fill a piece up with animals, you get bonuses, extra little tiles to put in, and it, it feels like a pretty easy game to play, and the concept is similar to many of his games. Be the first one to fill it in, but the decisions made are quick and fun, and I really like it, and of course having little wooden animals all over the board doesn't hurt. Number five is Ride the Rails. Now, he has a little train line of games, capstone games, and the first one, Irish Gage, I do not like at all. Um, and, and that style of game, uh, Chicago Express, the, those kind of games are not my style. But Ride the Rails I enjoyed because the game is about connecting trains and you're building across from the East Coast to the West Coast. And there are different ways to get points, but it almost gives me a similar feel to another game I enjoy called Airlines Europe where you're kind of trying to control the different line, railroad lines, but also move them and connect them to different cities. And there's a lot of cool, interesting decisions. And at first I thought the game might be a little bit on rails, sorry, um, but you know, kind of give a narrow path. But I felt like each time I played it, I get to make different and unique choices. And they also came out with extra maps to mess around and go different directions. It's a lot of fun. And it's one I don't think has gotten a lot of love, Ride the Rails. Number four, I mentioned earlier when I was talking about Curious Cargo, and that's Pipeline. Now, Pipeline has an interesting Venn diagram of the people who are going to like it because this game has two parts that come together. One part is connecting these pipes and building this little thing of all these different interconnecting pipes. Ooh, that's fun. And the other is a very heavy economic game. Ooh, that's also fun. But I met people who like one or the other. I tend to like both. Also with technology tiles, this is another thinky game, you know, just like Curious Cargo, but I really enjoy Pipeline. I think it's a lot of fun. Number three, a two-player game called Watergate. Now, one of the best games ever designed is Twilight Struggle, which depicts the Cold War going back and forth. Watergate, which is based on the Watergate scandal of President Richard Nixon, is a very much like a small, short version of that. And that's why I like it. One person's playing the president, attempting to stop um, the other player who's a reporter from trying to find things out. Don't worry, the game is not uber political. Yes, the politics are there. Yes, the history is there. But it is very abstracted in many ways. And it is asymmetric. Uh, the president's kind of just trying to survive the game. The reporter's trying to make some connections. The president's trying to stop them as they connect this board. It's fascinating. Cards can be used for different things. And it has just, a, it feels like a really big game condensed into a short play time and is honestly one of the best two-player games ever made. My number two is also a two-player game that since the expansion came out has catapulted it even higher since they basically doubled the content. And that is Rift Force. Rift Force for me is almost a battle line killer, um, as in this game, you are going to be taking four different factions of fantasy creatures or whatever, and you shuffle them together to make a deck, and they, they all, you're going to be playing them to different spots in the board, fighting against your opponent. Each one has a very unique ability. You're activating a bunch of them the same uh, number or the same color, and these things activate. They attack your enemy, or they do some cool, unique thing, and you, while you're both you know, getting points, it, it has a very strong tug of war feel to it. And because the expansion added tons more different fantasy races to mix in, really ups the content level and I really like it a lot. My number one, okay, no one's surprised at this, Ark Nova. Come on now, it's my favorite game right now. I just love this game. I love the mechanisms, I love the cards as you, the, you let them slide to the highest level. It gives them a stronger power, then you put them down to the, the bottom, and you have to pick the right ones at the right time. I love the theme. I'm building a zoo. That's really cool. I love this huge card deck where every card in it is different, and there's all kinds of cool things. I love the fact that my cards can upgrade. I love how scoring works in the game. Every time I play this, I am fascinated the entire time. My turns are short, but I'm in this, this big, giant game. Oh, it's so fun. They just announced an expansion for it. I'm, of course, interested in the expansion. But you know what? I'm really content with the base game as is. It is just an absolute fabulous time. The more I play it, the more I enjoyed it. The fact that it's a two to three hour game and it's still one of my most played games of this year says, says it all. It's just fantastic. Ark Nova, 
Very, very, very highly recommended and my favorite capstone game. Well, there's a lot of capstone games I didn't mention. Like I said, they make a lot of great stuff. Tell me your favorites in the comments below. Once again, I encourage all companies to follow Capstone's example and make their games look amazing. Games should play amazing, and then when they look amazing and you match them together, what a great combo. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell, and this has been my Top 10 Capstone Games. I'll see you next time. Nah, nah, fool, nah, nah, fool, nah, nah, fool. Yeah.